What's up everyone? This is Isaac from Hunger Smash Fitness. Um, I want to talk today about ammonia. Now I'm sure a ton of you have seen you know these mass monsters, massive dudes who go up and snort something you know crazy and then act like they're in a rage and go and deadlift insane amount of weight or what have you. Um, and you've wondered what this thing is that they're that they're smelling, that they're sniffing, that they're shoving up their nose. Um, So it's ammonia, it's called an ammonia inhalant. Um, some people refer to it as nose torque, um, it's, it's a, or smelling salt. Um, it has a long history, um, kind of started off with the Romans it looks like. Um, so the Romans started at first, the stuff that I have right now is this uh, Skull Smash. I'm not sponsored by them, but this stuff is pretty cool, I really like it. Um, so anyway, so kind of started off with the Romans a bit. They seemed like they were the first ones that used it, and they mostly used it for uh, fainting women. Um, but over the years, it's kind of changed. Eventually, um, boxers got a hold of it, and a lot of boxers would use it during competitions, um, especially if they got hit in such a way that rattled them and made them feel woozy. Then they would uh, take a quick sniff of some ammonia, and it'd wake them back up. Um, it ended up later being banned during for boxing competitions um, because of the fact that if you're snorting something like this and it and it revitalizes you and wakes you back up, they were worried that it could mask a, a deeper injury, basically. Um, but nowadays, uh, powerlifters, strongmen, weightlifters uh, use it. NFL, NFL is probably one of the, the big ones that everyone sees it in. Um, back in 2005, Michael Strahan did a, a study and he estimated that between 70 and 80% of NFL players at the time uh, use smelling salts regularly. So it has a, a, a large history and it has a, a very uh, broad reach. But the very interesting thing, I when I was looking up to, to do this video, I wanted to look up any studies on it and there hasn't really been much research done on it. And most of the research that was done was fairly negative, which I found interesting. A lot of people, um, and they, they weren't using it for kind of what its general use is. So kind of before we go further down that path, I want to talk about what exactly is it doing? Um, what exactly is ammonia doing? And essentially, um, when you take a, a whiff of, a, of ammonia, the ammonia is an irritant, and so it acts in the, uh, the nasal passageway, and it, it basically uh, irritates and stimulates the nerves. So it uh, irritates and stimulates the olfactory and the trifacial, and especially the, uh, the vagus nerve. And if you think about it, the vagus nerve is, is what helps control the heart and the bronchi. So when you take a big whiff of, of ammonia, that shock response causes you to breathe deeper. So you're pulling in more air, more oxygen, and it also stimulates your heart and your bronchi. And so everything gets ramped up and it's very temporary, temporary effect. Um, but basically it, it, it helps give you a very short intense shot of adrenaline um and that's what for this reason is why um a lot of wrestlers uh nfl players power lifters strongmen they use it because its effects are very very limited very short term um but it it really it jolts you awake and so in my own personal um self-study on it what I found is that it's its effects aren't very long-lasting at all 
maybe 30 seconds tops. Um, but during that time, um, it gives you this boost of adrenaline and it, and it will help you lift more weight and it will help you um, perform better, especially if you're already fatigued. If you're going in fresh and you know you just had your pre-workout or whatever, you just warmed up and everything and you do a, a, sh a hit of ammonia, um, I find that I don't see as much of a difference. Uh, I know other people who have used it for much longer and conditioned themselves to respond to that um, will have a much more drastic impact on their lifting. Um, but what I found is especially later in the workout, once I'm a little bit more fatigued, and then if I'm going for you know one or two reps, I find that it doesn't really do much past that essentially, for me at least. Um, but especially if I'm doing one or two reps, I can use it as a wake up to shock my system to get it to, to wake back up and revitalize. So several of the studies that I found um, were using ammonia more for cardio, for endurance, and they were finding that it, it, it essentially had no impact or very minimal impact. And I thought that was very interesting that they would try to do that just because um, if anyone's ever used ammonia, you'll know that um, the burning in your nose may last for a little while, but the actual um, blood rush that you feel, the, the shock to your system where you can, you can kind of feel your body wake up a little bit and jolt to an extent, um, that doesn't last very long at all. And that's one of the reasons why it's so useful, especially for someone who's lightheaded, who's fainted, um, uh, well, especially along those lines, is because especially if you're, if you're fainting due to lack of oxygen, due to, uh, you know, poor circulation, blah, blah, blah everything else, um, doing something like this will cause an increase in, it'll, it'll cause a little bit of vasodilation, which some of the studies looked at, um, and, it, and, it, and so it will cause some vasodilation, and it will in, in cause an increased heart rate. It will, it will increase all these different factors, but only for a very short period of time. Um, so if you're, if you're feeling faint and you take a, a whiff of ammonia, of, of smelling salts, I, now, okay, that's another thing I want to point out. Don't go sniffing household ammonia. Okay, so if you're using a cleaning solution, it's different. It's it's uh, chemical uh, makeup is is different, and uh, I would not recommend that. Um, household ammonia, especially found in high concentrations and high doses, can be lethal. I know OSHA has said um, exposure for more than I think it's 15 minutes or something like that is not recommended, and um, there's a bunch of other stuff about it. So. If you're using household ammonia, don't, don't sniff that. That's not good. Um, what I'm referring to is exactly this. Uh, so it's, it's smelling salts. It's an exact uh, concentration in water um, for, for the purpose of, of s stimulating the nervous system, essentially. Um, specifically the vagus nerve, but also just like trifacial and olfactory and everything else like I mentioned as well. Um, so yeah, don't, don't do household ammonia. Make sure that if you're going to, if you're going to use ammonia during a workout or something like that, make sure that it's the actual, um, smelling salts. So after all that, just saying, um, I think it's perfectly safe to use if you're using it correctly. I think it can be very beneficial. It can be, uh, it can really help you with your lifting. It can be um, another thing in, well, I always refer to it as my Mary Poppins bag, but my my gym bag of, you know, my sleeves, my belt, my everything else, throwing some ammonia in there, throwing some chalk. Um, it can help you with those specific things. Now, I don't use smelling salts very often. I'm a couple times a year, usually. Um, so it's not something that I'm, I'm, sniffing every single workout it's if i'm dragging if i'm feeling like i'm i don't have the energy to perform this next set this next lift then i'll then i'll use it to stimulate that to to get the energy for that temporary boost to do the next set um and again if you're going to go out for a run or something like that it's not built for that it's not um 
is not going to help you with that. It's a very short-term effect for an explosive power output, basically. So anyways, that's all for today. And once again, this is Isaac from Hunger Smash Fitness. Uh, just remember to always improve that 1%.